hard to put in words what you feel when you see a bald eagle fly. They have a exceptional like eight foot wingspan and as they come close um, it's you just can't not be impressed. They perch erect, bolt upright with perfect posture as they scan the horizon around them and of course the adult has the this sort of straw colored eyes and then the intense yellow orange beak and just the the power that you see in that beak and those talons. Um, it's, it's very impressive. The irony, the greatest nation on earth would allow its symbol, its national bird, to become critically endangered over much of its range. It's a slap in the face. And it's extraordinary what measures we took to bring the eagle back. Bald eagle was a very common bird across North America. The early settlers and the early explorers, their notes show that bald eagles were encountered you know, very frequently around the Great Lakes and around the coasts, but they were seen all throughout the United States. So there was kind of this us against the wilderness, us against the native wildlife, and certainly a really big conspicuous predator like a bald eagle, regardless of its, its iconic status, um, was not immune from that. But there's not, you know, a real scientific study of how these animals operate in the wild to elucidate whether they cause depredations on livestock, are they a threat to people, we really didn't know. Story goes that he's coming back from a New England visit and he's on a train and he looks out the window and he sees a lone huge tree in a field and there's this monstrous nest with a bald eagle there and he has this thought, I wonder what it would take to be able to get close enough where you could actually record the home life of the bald eagle. And the pictures he took were just fascinating. I mean, you feel like you're right there. You see the adult eagles bringing in fish. You see the eaglets in the nest. You see the adults feeding the young. And it was a wonderful insight into the domestic life of the bald eagle. He was also studying what was in the nest. It was mostly fish bones, muskrat bones, some um, waterfowl bones, but precious few chicken bones, no sheep bones, and the bones of no small children. So this was a really important study that was part of a movement in the 1920s to say that our anti-predator campaigns are really based on faulty evidence. Yeah, DDT and other pesticides were really useful in fighting malaria and other disease, but the unintended consequences became very clear in the 50s and into the 60s these pesticides would get concentrated in the ecosystem. Invertebrates would pick them up and then their predators would eat them. For bald eagles and other raptors, this had pretty serious biochemical impacts on them. The eggshells were thinner. The birds would go to incubate the eggs and their own body weight would crush the egg. Even after the elimination of the pesticides, it was still present in the environment. Bald eagles still persisted in North America but essentially reproduction stopped. So in 1983, we had our first successful fertile egg. The following year, we actually had our first hatch. And it's so amazing to see the national bird at hatch because it's three and a half ounces of not a whole lot of fury, <laughs> you know, the, the downy feathers are matted wet on it. And then in a matter of hours, the downy feathers dry out and as soon as they do, they immediately fluff up and you have something that looks dinosaurian and reptilian and all of a sudden it looks adorably cute. People can now see a bald eagle any month of the year in the Cleveland area. Uh, they're nesting in Minter Marsh, which is one of the museum's preserves. 
Uh, they're nesting in the southern part of Cuyahoga County along the now much cleaner Cuyahoga River. It's a conservation success story today, but that doesn't mean we get to sit back and just enjoy bald eagles. We have to continue providing uh, safe habitats for them. I'm very proud of this institution. I mean, it, you know, there's a, a history of the museum of just sort of having a can-do attitude and doing remarkable things with the things at your disposal. And the Eagle story kind of falls into that, and it's very, very gratifying to see that they are no longer classed as an endangered species. They are no longer threatened. The bald eagle is back.